Vaseline Topalov joins us in our studio here at the Gibraltar Masters after his dynamic win with the white pieces here in round three. Weslin, a win against Fabian, um, an exchange sacrifice, typical of your style, but it was not, uh, it, it was quite a complicated game. Well, uh, it is absolutely true. Uh, the, the exchange sacrifice was, was my only chance actually, but uh, it's, uh, I would say uh, my opening was kind of okay, but then I got to over optimistic and uh, especially my last move night uh, G5, I believe is a mistake. And then, um, for example, here, Black has a very strong move, F6. And, you know, what happened was I was calculating that this move, and then the, the light went down. So uh, he played, uh, so, or, or maybe first Fabian played 94, which which a move I also missed, you know. Uh, but again, I didn't have to, I didn't have time to consider the move F6. So what I, what I missed was that, for some reason, I believe that uh, bishop g8 is my threat, but in fact, black has knight d3 or bishop d3. But in fact, I do have the idea to take first and then uh, a typical bishop g8 uh, So you idea. mean after f6? Now, you... But now it doesn't work because, because I'm not the on time he takes. Yes. And then black is uh, practically winning. So the point uh, is that, but it's a really nice idea because if you take on c5, then you've got this bishop g8 exactly. and, and white actually wins this game because of the threat of queen h7. Yeah, exactly. Um, so knight e4 was another move I missed because, uh, for example, if I take with the knight, then black has... Uh, let me help you. Uh, black has a very strong move, uh, bishop f2 now, and black is better again, I believe. So and I didn't want to put my my uh, king on d1. It looked to me uh, like uh, not natural place. And for sure, uh, if king moves to d1, then black is fine. So what I had to do then was uh, to sacrifice in exchange, but that was more, not my original idea. As I said, uh, I believe that here bet, it was better for me to play first a4 to, re, to, to kick out the, the bishop. So there's no knight d3 exactly. or bishop and d3 and then maybe just line. return. But um, or even not to, you know, or even the other idea was not to to weaken my pawn structure with b3 earlier. But explain but this to us. After a4, black was to retreat with yes, the bishop, let's for say. for example, to e8. To e8 or to d7. For, yeah, or but, what? but now I, I probably I just return. So I I play positionally. And don't I don't believe it's a good idea to exchange my knight because uh, especially black square bishop is a, a problem. Uh, white square bishop is a problem for black. And I'm kind of pushing my Very pawns. fast. So, right. And then the moment where you actually sacrificed the exchange? Yes. Uh, well, I believe that I believe that, oh, no, um, I believe that uh, Fabian, he made a mistake because... So you played bishop yes. e4. Okay. Uh, and here. He took. Yeah. Castle. Bishop is it's correct, bishop of course. D3. Bishop d3. Uh, I have to exchange. Yes. Yeah, so Otherwise, mate might be coming. So, so you didn't really have an option no, here. Because no, because, uh, well... It's Queen f2, but then I somehow felt my king shouldn't stay on uh, d2. And it's also true that white has absolutely no threat. So right. it can only. So this is uh, thanks to my good pawn structure, I believe. Um, Did you feel you had enough compensation here? Yes, but I, of course, I was not happy with my position. And here, I believe black has to take. And it's. And followed by queen d5 and maybe b5, b4, and it's in clear position. I don't think white is worse, but I was even considered to take with the g pawn because sometimes my rook is uh, active on the f you file. You mean the f pawn instead of yeah. the h pawn? It was also possible, yes. And here, for example, after rook h2, uh, let's say here, king moves to uh, b2. So the thing is that I, I don't always, you know, want to take because, because of then... Of g6. Uh, Yes, so sometimes I first want to play a 5, f6. And but let's show that because uh, the first move that comes to mind in such a position is to take on h6. No, yes. But, but the problem is that black always has this now defensive resource. Now somehow can be safe, he can put it on h7. So uh, white, can, but of course I can always take. Uh, so first I have to, black has to, uh, a clear, yes. uh, simple threat. 
So uh, I have to move my king now. And then I, I consider that oh. b5, okay. you know, uh, that b5 would be the move. And I didn't know what to do exactly because, for example, uh, well, my idea was to, to put my queen on e3 because b4, in fact, for the moment is not a problem. I might just go something like f5. And if black takes, then I uh, can continue to... Put pressure uh, on put the king's side but because course, you want to go f6 next. But the game is far from over. I believe that now for, oops, uh, after queen, queen d3, w without queens, black shouldn't lose. Right. But here he did not play bishop g5 trading this knight. And after that, after you got knight e4, did you feel you were better now? Yes, yes, for sure. But of course, uh, I, I'm not sure I, I did correct all the, the, the good moves. For example... Um, so let's just go queen d5. Okay. And uh, it took me some time, king d2. And here I expected him to play b5. But this is a mistake because it runs to all kinds of uh, uh, checks. Uh, and... Okay, I really considered to start with the move f5, but then I thought he might take, and um, somehow I believe this pawn was important, so I decided to play positionally uh, with h5, and here I believe white is already clearly better, and... You know, you say white is already clear better. If in words, how would you explain this to our viewers? Why did you? Why would you say white is clearly better no, here? Despite I, I do have uh, several options. I can um, first black rooks are a bit passive, and then the other uh, thing in, is that even b5 and b4 is not really a threat because I can close C4. with c4. And of course, I have all kind of uh, my uh, opening of his. Uh, for example, here. Uh, after b5, I thought uh, this is dangerous because I take and I uh, play, let's say, like this. So I believe that opening the king was... Uh, it's very dangerous for black, exactly. while black cannot put pressure on your king in any way. So No, my king is much it's very safe. Of course, because if he takes two times, then I just move my, uh, my knight to g3, take a with, with check on... F5. Uh, F5. And that's the reason I believe King G7 was a big mistake. Uh, although position was probably worse anyway. And after King G7, H5. Uh, oh, sorry. Yes. H5. Uh, Bishop C5, you know. Yes. Uh, okay, I believe this is a strong move. Um, and here, white is dominating with the Rook move. Rook D6. Uh, Rook D6. Take, take, and now my next move is queen d4, and he, black is not able to stop it because after uh, queen d5, c4. And, and queen d1? And, and then queen c3 check. anyway. And so then I'm entering all these squares. The dark squares. And then I believe after rook d6, or even before, of course, uh, um, white is already winning. Uh, but, but this was really nice to open this diagonal yes. for your queen to come into play. Yes, and after the move, look at eight. Look at eight, check, f6. Okay, I, uh, d7 was also, uh, I mean, um, d7, for d7, queen d5, and here, that, that's kind of last trick that black has, that after king uh, move, moving to... Yeah. And probably uh, if you it's take on winning, if you right? take on e8, you make another knight. Of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so you make another knight, no. oh, not if, the queen. No, uh, in fact, that's also winning. Even even what I showed was also winning because in this position, after taking, black is able to you know to defend. Very but nice. even this even is now, winning. Well, I don't know because uh, g7 is losing yeah. and so you have to move. Well, but of course then he just and takes. And for everything. So it's. Done. Completely un. Although you, after rook f4, maybe you have knight h5. Yeah, but then check. So oh, and, king and then the covers. king comes so in. Just uh, it makes no sense to go for these complications. Uh, in fact, um, I believe here knight f6 was also winning. But I think I just made a simple move, C4. stopping stopping uh, the, the the move queen d5. And of course, between other ideas, now I want to take. I want to push d7, right. and I also want to play g5. Right. And after g5. Uh, a very nice finish with d7. Yes, so now you're threatening I, d8 and the f6 pawn exactly, is hanging like in every line. Uh, but 
We know that exchange sacrifices have been your style of play. I know you think in this game it was forced, but tell us from where do you did you how did this start? This inspiration to play for initiative. Uh, well, normally, of course, uh, it doesn't always work. You know, uh, I honestly I just don't know how uh, why that happens like this. That I've made so many exchange sacrifices in my life, but uh, even uh, for example. Uh, Petros and he has this famous move rook e6, which is quite typical. But I, I believe I've, I have many more exchange sacrifices. And uh, well, maybe there's something wrong with the counting uh, the pieces. I was <laughs> thought that rook is stronger than uh, bishop or knight, but uh, some in your games, the games it works yeah, differently. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I forget it. Right, and we've got a Blitz event tonight, one of our uh, social calendar event. Uh, you're not going to be participating, but will you be there watching? Yeah, for sure, but uh, on, I, I'm, not, I'm not good in Blitz and I'm not going to play, so <laughs> we uh, also it will be fun to watch. We also had you yesterday at the masterclass that Shakriar gave us, and it, that was very nice of you to attend that. Did you enjoy yourself? A lot, yeah, a lot. I even guessed one move. Correctly. Uh, correctly, which was the move knight g6, because... Uh, uh, I believe that um, somehow, okay, only a pawn is not a problem to give only a pawn, but of course, uh, it was a brilliant game. A brilliant uh, game, but actually this knight g6 idea was probably what started this trade of knight g6 and bishop yeah, e5. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise, of course, uh, white, uh, white is uh, clearly better because he has an easy uh, play pu pushing the pawns on the queen side. Right. Exactly. Now, Wesley and I remember we were having this conversation, I think it was with Brian, where you, because there is such a big social calendar around the Gibraltar Chess Festival, that you actually told uh, Brian that maybe the only side event that's missing in Gibraltar is a wedding. Well, uh, <laughs> exactly. Or uh, engagement. Minimum, it could be just an engagement. Uh, but uh, it will not be me for sure, but uh, I, I'm sure that uh, it will eventually happen somehow. And you actually have some ideas to encourage that as well. No, no, okay, it's just a joke. <laughs> because I never had all this kind of Tinder or mythic stuff, so that's why, why I'm, I'm inviting and I'm talking always about it. But uh, a I, chest don't, I, I don't even know how it looks like. So, <laughs> Well, it makes for an interesting conversation, but the games that you've been playing so far have also been very interesting. Happy with your play so far? Uh, today I'm not happy and yesterday maybe I chose a wrong uh, opening, but of course with the black pieces, if white wants to force a draw to play solidly, it's extremely difficult. Right. And somehow I didn't expect my opponent to, you know, to, uh, to choose exactly this line. And okay, it's a normal game, but uh, still uh, with seven rounds to go. Long many, tournament. Exactly. Long tournament, we wish you all the best. Thank you for your time, Weslin. Thank you. Thank you.